So Luther said that we need to hear the gospel every day because we forget it every day. The law we remember, the law we will spend our whole lives trying to avoid because we forget the gospel actually confronts the fact that we cannot fulfill the law with the peace that is Jesus fulfilled the law for you and forgives you all your sins. Let's put it into practice. There's a Tower of Babel in the book of Genesis chapter 11. The whole earth had one language. Everybody was working together. We, we sort of imagine this to be a, this really beautiful um, utopian society where they are building a tower up to heaven and we can't imagine how could that be bad when a whole bunch of sinners work together with one voice until we actually think about like what a riot looks like when everybody's breaking stuff together, crying out with one voice because all of our sin would unite itself to one purpose, and that is that we would climb forward. Everybody remembers the law. What we forget and need to hear every day is the gospel. My suspicion is that that's still true. The people who remember the flood just like a chapter ago where God destroyed the whole earth in wrath over sin have forgotten the promise of the rainbow. And so they're trying to build up. They're trying to build away from where they might suffer again a God of the law. We need a God of the gospel. A God of the gospel will address this because here's the thing, you can build a tower all the way up to heaven, you're going to run out of air. Uh, but more realistically, all that really means is standing on top of somebody else and their hard work to hold yourself up. What if the Tower of Babel was not a utopia, but a disaster, a, a riot, all the people crying out with one voice, trying to escape a God of wrath, and he meets them with a promise of mercy. I'm not going to allow this to happen because all of you working together towards one goal, you're right, there is nothing that they cannot accomplish, but that doesn't mean that it's a good thing either. That just means that there's one person left standing on top of everybody else saying, I am the tallest and the closest to heaven, but they still won't be there. So God, in his mercy, he confuses their language. He disperses them among the earth that he can preach to them the gospel that they need to hear every day. It's safe down here, even in the midst of sin and misery and decay, because God has promised not only will he never destroy us again by a flood in wrath, but he has met our sins with the blood of Jesus to cover them, to, to forgive you, to promise to be with you, even in this veil of, of, of tears, this, this dark, dark valley of the shadow of death, that he would lead you through, that you would fear no evil, for the Lord is with us. His rod and his staff, they shepherd us. God is with us in the midst of all of our sin over and over again, forgiving us. He often even sets up a table in the presence of our enemies with a chalice on it that runneth over full of the blood of Christ to forgive us all of our sins. The Tower of Babel is a story of what happens when all we can think about is the law. We will do our best to build something perfect and it will never actually work. So God in his mercy spares us the desire. He confuses the language and then he preaches to us each in our own tongue that we would hear the promises, not just of do better of the law, but he would hear the promise of the gospel. Jesus died for you. What do you value? At Concordia University, Nebraska, we value the equipping of church workers for lives of service to both church and world. In a culture where our faith can often be met with derision, our world needs ardent Christian leaders to rise to the helm and steer the next generation of Christ followers into new territory. You have the God-given gifts. We have the tools to uncover and develop them. We are Nebraska's university with values.